What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about British kitchens versus American kitchens. I am continually surprised at how many differences there are between Britain and America, not just in the way we talk, but in our stuff. Our stuff. Our stuff is different. How many times can I say stuff? Our, our stuff is really different, including our kitchens, apparently. But I actually secretly really love it because it's fascinating to learn about just the most common everyday sort of things that we interact with all the time, like going into your kitchen is different in Britain versus America. I'm fascinated by it. And so without any further ado, let's learn about it. Here are five ways that British and American kitchens are very different. Okay. Kettles. Ket <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you'd kind of be hard pressed to even find a kettle in most American households, kitchens. Like, is a kettle the same thing as a teapot? Like, I, the fact that I'm even asking this question kind of says something, right? I don't know if you've heard this or not, but my homeland of Britain may or may not be obsessed with tea. We're so <laughs> obsessed, in fact, that when everybody was worried about running out of toilet roll, we were clearing the shelves of PG tips. Huh. And our That's funny. I actually didn't know that when people were kind of swamping the stores for stuff a couple of years ago to bunker down at home. Were Brits really like scooping up all the tea? I hope that's true. I actually kind of, <laughs> that's actually, I like that, <laughs> honestly. And it makes sense. And uh, just talking about kettles makes sense that I don't really understand what's going on because obviously tea is not nearly the behemoth here in America that it is in Britain. Not even close. Obsession with tea can be seen through the gadget we use to make it, the electric right. kettle. An electric kettle is a kettle that is electric. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's joking, like, he's trying to say how obvious it is, like, what it is and what it does, but I actually kind of need him to explain this, like, I'm a two-year-old, actually. I've never encountered an electric kettle. I didn't know that they could be electric. I don't know what it all means. That is, you plug it into the wall. Now, I don't have British plug sockets where I live, so what you're seeing right now is not completely authentic. Mm. But the electric kettle at my house is made by the British company, Russell Hobbs. You simply plug it in, put water in it, switch it on, and wait for it to boil. So, oh man, this is going to sound so... <laughs> like, this is so basic to British people, I'm sure. Um, is it like a teapot that you do not need to put on the stove? To heat up it's just like i see that they're side by side here does the teapot and the kettle do the same thing the kettle's just you can put it on the counter and turn it on and it boils water it sounds like the same thing as a teapot right now any british people watching this might be thinking how on earth do americans make tea well firstly <laughs> americans don't drink tea quite as much as british people and not even not even close like i honest i honestly didn't even really know what he was saying by saying kettle. Like, that's not even a word we use much at all. Secondly, even though America doesn't have a royal family, coffee is king. Not literally, that would yeah. be absurd. But for yeah. Americans who do drink tea or hot drinks that aren't coffee, they usually have stovetop kettles. They w Yes, sto- oh, so... Wait, in Britain is a kettle? It's called a kettle, not a teapot. Because I was always taught to say teapot. Kettle is like this word I am aware of and kind of ignore because I don't really know what it means. Now I do. And uh, yeah, I mean, Americans drink coffee. Like, n not really much tea at all. That kind of explains this. Work much the same way as electric kettles, except you don't plug them in. And the only thing that you turn on is the stove. Yeah. I have to say why. Wait, I, I assumed, oh man, I really assumed this was how everyone in Britain made their tea every day with a teapot, with a, with a stove top kettle. I feel like now I feel kind of dumb, like I've been living in the like 17th century. 
like school of thought, thinking that this is how it's done. They've probably had an electric kettle for a while now, huh? And it se seems a lot more convenient to just flip a switch on and start the water boiling. Man, oh, I I'm, I'm learning this for the very first time. Forgive me. I have to say, while I don't have a major preference between both types of kettles, there is something a little bit satisfying about a kettle that whistles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like this is the only kettle I know of. Like, this is kind of blowing my mind. <laughs> Plus, that way you know when it's done, even if you're in another wing of your house, another right. room of your house. Right. Either way, when it comes to Britain, the electric kettle is not the only kitchen gadget that uses water. Wow. Laundry. Do, do British houses have the laundry stuff in the kitchen? Like a bunch of weirdos? No. Because <laughs> uh, Americans have the laundry either in the bathroom or its own dedicated little closet tucked away. But... I, I think the la the laundry's in the kitchen. That, I mean, there's no other reason this would be in the video, right? <laughs> Washing machines in a kitchen. Sorry, America, for most Brits, this is a harsh reality. What? I say harsh, most of us wouldn't want it any other way. When I was growing up, the washing machine was right there next to the kitchen sink. Oh, man, it's, it, it's difficult to even, like, register, like, look at. To see washing machine in the kitchen next to the sink and and uh, kind of washer for for bowls and stuff the washing machine um, <laughs> it's 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 weird it's like I don't know it's like we're taught as Americans like somehow the washing machine is unsanitary or something because you're like throwing dirty clothes into it and you wouldn't want to Bring your dirty clothes into the kitchen, I guess? That's like the first thing that comes to my mind. If I'm trying at all to justify why the heck we do it the way we do in America. I think it was an easy way to consolidate chores and get chicken curry in your underpants. And it doesn't end there because a lot of British washing machines also contain a dryer in one machine. It's not a great idea because the dryer is usually rubbish. Hen Wait, what? The dryer is in the washer? The dryer's in the wa- I didn't know that was possible. Uh, what? It's like Britain has, like, developed all this technology for make boiling water, for washing and drying, and Americans are just not aware of it. Like, what's going on here? Well, apparently, according to him, the, the dryer part is pretty bad when you try to combine them, I guess. I- I didn't know that. I didn't know any of this, let alone that level of detail. That's why a lot of Brits still put their clothes out on a washing line across the pond. Oh, so a lot of Brits. Oh my, this is, this is so fantastic. Like this is the most random stuff I would never otherwise have known about. Man, so a lot of Brits are out there putting their clothes on the clothing line to dry it because your dryer stinks. Man, I thought it was just hanging it out in the sunlight for fun or something, for to reminisce about the old times when people did that. Wow. And look around most kitchens in the United States and you won't find a washing machine. You no. might sometimes find them in a kind of pseudo laundry room that's attached to the kitchen, sure, but not sure. normally beneath the microwave. No, no, never, never, never would the, the washing machine be in the kitchen. It's unheard of. I do hope all of that sinks in. And speaking of sinks, that brings us on to this. <laughs> the sink. How are the sinks different? The only famous thing I know about this is that famously, uh, in British households, there can be two faucets, hot and cold. That's the only thing I know. Join me now and imagine a dystopian future <laughs> in which humanity has run out of dishwashers. What would we do? Well, the answer to that question might depend on the country that you live in. For oh. example, Americans would be more likely than Brits to hand wash their dishes under water running from a tap. On the yeah. other hand, Brits might be more likely than Americans to clean them in a sink filled with hot water. This is partly done to be huh. more economical with water use, but it's also because British homes didn't, and in some cases still don't, have mixer taps. Right, there we go. Like two taps and uh, 
Brits are more likely to fill the sink up with water and just put the dishes in it. I, y you could find some Americans doing that. I don't know if that's purely a British thing. In other words, most British homes were equipped with separate hot and cold taps. Right. And so cleaning dishes under a running hot tap might result in third degree burns. <laughs> However, primed almost universally with mixer taps, which help them to regulate temperature, Americans don't have to worry about that. Additionally, America. Oh, so Americans can like just have the water running uh, while you're cleaning because the water, we can like turn it to a medium temperature that does not melt you. <laughs> Whereas in Britain, if you can only turn on the hot water, very hot water, you'd have to fill up the sink and let it cool down a little bit to dip your hand. Wow, that makes so much sense. That makes sense. Wow. American kitchen sinks often come equipped with gadgets that might seem alien in some British homes. For example, and this is one of my favorites, the garbage disposal. This mm. is a mechanical feature inside plug holes that breaks up waste. It's also the cause of death for 57% of people in American horror films. Wait, wait. Are, did he just say that uh, dis disposals are not common in Britain? Did I hear this correctly? It's the garbage disposal. The garbage disposal, that's, that's not common in Britain? Alien in some British homes. For example, and this is one of my favorites, the garbage disposal. That is what it sounds like he's saying. Additionally, American kitchen sinks often come equipped with gadgets that might seem alien in some British homes. For There's no garbage disposals in the British homes? What? Why would that just be an American thing? It's so useful. Are we just, is it just cause we're slobs? Like it's a, it's a hole, you know, where the water can go down, but it has a bunch of rotating blades to chop up all your disgusting leftover food that's on your plate. You can just kind of push it down the hole and turn it on and it starts spinning this blade that chops everything up, including you if you're in a, Horror movie, as he said. <laughs> Inside plug holes that breaks up waste. It's also the cause of death for 57% of people in American horror films. And right. the other delightful gadget that's found in a lot of American sinks is the sprayer hose. This is kind of a pre-clean yeah. thing where you spray all of the gunk off the plate and then you clean your plate under regulated warm water. So, Wait, what? I can't believe there's so many differences between sinks uh, in Britain and America. What? It's a lot based on because American sinks can regulate the water temperature. Although I thought like a lot of modern British sinks had one tap that you control the temperature of like American sinks is, have always kind of been. But geesh, we have garbage disposals. And the fact that you can uh, have a little sprayer where you like pick it up and you can s spray things and shoot it and it's on a hose, that's handy as well. I can't imagine why British kitchens wouldn't have that. So okay, in this dishwasherless dystopian nightmare, both countries do at least have options, but what about when it comes to drying the dishes? In Britain, it's fairly normal not to rinse the soap off before letting the dishes dry on the drying rack. Once there, the soap, in theory, slides off or dissolves. But, oh, what a, what a totally random little detail that in Britain, you let the soap sit on the plates as they dry. And in America, you always uh, rinse off the soap or else it'd be considered like disgusting. It'd be like, you left a bunch of soap on the silverware and the plates. I'm gonna taste that later. I don't know. I don't know why we think that. Maybe it does just fall off if you leave it alone. I've never thought about it. Why? This is making me question why we do the things we do. It was hard to explain that to my American wife because Americans, for the most part, rinse off the soap with tap water, or if you're feeling lucky, the sprayer hose, yeah. and either leave it to dry in the drying rack or may or may not get to it straight away with a towel. Now, yeah. I've never been passionately in favor of one method over the other, but the argument huh. often thrown forward for the British way is that rinsing can leave water stains. And I suppose that's true if you're lazy and thinking about it, I am. If water stains? What on earth is a water stain? How do you, 
How do you stain something with water? I... I don't understand. If I wasn't, I probably wouldn't make use of these. Egg cup. I, I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. It might as well be a kettle. Egg cups. What on earth is an egg cup? And I'm not exclusively throwing that question at Americans because Americans of a certain region or generation have often told me, oh, we had those growing up. I don't, that was really British, sorry. But the fact <laughs> is most Americans are probably not familiar with egg cups and most certainly don't have them in their houses. No. On the other hand, according to a law that I just made up, it's illegal for British kitchens not to have one. <laughs> We're even handed them at birth. The parents walk away with a baby, an egg cup, and four boxes of PG tips. But what do we use them for? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is yeah. where the lazy part of Lawrence comes in. They house soft boiled eggs, and these are soft boiled eggs. Oh! Oh, wow. Wait. <laughs> Wait, this is kind of fun. It's a little, it's a little bowl for your egg. Soft boiled. Uh, I don't really know anything about soft-boiled eggs, hard-boiled eggs. I don't eat that stuff. Most Americans don't ever have soft-boiled eggs. Some do, but I'm still, still with that being true, I've never seen a, a teacup. I like how you can make a little design, like this is a little body, so the egg is like the head. I get it. This is kind of fun. It's just not, a, not really a breakfast item that exists in America, though. That's why, that's why we don't know what the heck this is. I've had the top knocked off them. I've never been really good at that part. And what you do is you dip toast or bread soldiers into the egg. And what? it is the most amazing breakfast in the whole world and you're all wrong, shut up. <laughs> wow, it's like an art almost. You dip, so you leave it there in your egg cup. I thought you just like eat the egg with a spoon or something out of that. But you can also, it's holding it up so you can dip stuff in. Oh man, it just never ends. The genius. Egg cups. I do realize that for some of you, you've just learned a new word. The yeah. perfect segue <laughs> into this. <laughs> Kitchen lingo. Oh man, this is probably like a ton of different words that are different between Brit British and American kitchens. But I've already learned like so many new things. Kettles. Uh... What else we have here? The egg cups. I feel like there was something else. Well, all the washing machines that are in the kitchens and the lack of garbage disposals. I never imagined there were so many differences. Okay, kitchen lingo, <laughs> words for things. Just to bring us full circle, there are of course many British and American word differences when it comes to food. Okay. I have done and will continue to do videos on that. But here's a short sample of variations in kitchen lingo. Okay. In Britain, whether or not the hot and cold taps are unified, tap is the word we go for. And while I have heard that word applied in the United States, Americans will often opt for faucet. Yes, definitely. Definitely faucet. Although we do say tap water. We always say tap water for the water coming out, but it's a faucet for sure. Tap. Tap is a bit more elegant though. And sometimes when the plumbing's bad and the water won't come out, you might have to force it. Sorry, that joke only works in Britain. Anyway, whether it is tap or faucet, you will need one to do the washing up. Washing up, that's what Americans say when they just take five minutes to clean themselves. In Britain, that's our phrase for doing the dishes. And if we're not being lazy, we might dry the dishes by hand. In I don't know. I think in America, most people call it doing the dishes. Like seriously, I think most people, most Americans would say doing the dishes. That's what Americans say when they just take five minutes to clean themselves. In Britain, that's our phrase for doing the dishes. And uh, I, I'd say that's an American phrase as well. Uh, I, I guess some Americans might say washing up. That almost sounds like it has to do with washing yourself though, rather than the dishes. And if we're not being lazy, we might dry the dishes by hand. In order to do this, we use what is known as a tea towel. In America, oh. I've heard many variants on this, but you might be hard pressed to find somebody that uses the term tea towel. No, 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 no. No one says tea towel, because no one is out here having tea, let alone having a towel for, named after the tea. Dish towel, okay. Instead, in Indiana, I think I most commonly heard dish towel. In my sure. house, I don't know about anybody else's, these can often be found hanging from the oven. 
I don't know why I did that, because actually both countries use the word oven. But in Britain, we also call it a cooker. And that's something for which my wife has ridiculed me for 15 years. A cooker. A cooker. I mean, that's what it does. I mean, <laughs> could there not be a more appropriate name? The cooker for the oven. <laughs> oh, that is kind of funny in a way, though. The cooker. I've not heard that one. Thank you for watching this latest Vlogmas episode. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with all of my daily videos through Christmas. As ever, a big thank you to- Wow, wow, wow. That was, that was very good. Uh, this video is by Lost in the Pond, who is an amazing British YouTuber. And I gotta give it a like, because I really liked that. I, I was not expecting, although at this point maybe I should expect it, so many weird little differences between American and British kitchens, down to, gosh, down to how we wash dishes, how long we leave the soap on, and what we call a faucet, or a tap, or a cooker, or an oven, or the existence of egg cups and electric kettles. I found out they can be electric today. I found, I found out a lot today. And uh, I'm actually very pleased about it. This was very entertaining. I love it when it's a bunch of stuff I've never learned before. I'm just still kind of shocked. There's so much kitchen stuff that's different. Uh, but very entertaining and very enjoyable. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture, and things in Britain that I've never learned before, or heard about, or seen ever, feel free to subscribe for more! And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time!